Three, two, one. We've learned a lot of scientific terms today. Could you explain some of these more in depth? Absolutely, yeah. So first of all, let's talk about velocity. Velocity is the speed of an object. Now, this could be how fast your car is moving down the street. It could be how fast a pitcher is throwing the ball, or maybe the exit velocity of a baseball off of a bat. So basically, it's how fast something is moving. And then, a lot of times, we talk about force as well. And the way I think about force is really the push or pull of an object. And once you start pushing or pulling an object, and that object starts to move, that object now has kinetic energy. And this is really important because that's the energy of a, of a moving object. So again, if we think about a ball, you know, a pitcher throws a ball at the batter, it has kinetic energy. When we think about the mathematical formula for kinetic energy, Ke, kinetic energy, equals one half times the mass of the object times the velocity squared. Do you know what a square is by any yes. chance? So, so basically, V times V, that means that it has, the velocity has a very important role in the kinetic energy. And with a small increase in velocity, you get a really big increase in energy. And that's important because if you think about maybe someone who's throwing 70 miles per hour, if you go from 70 miles per hour to someone who's throwing 100 miles per hour, your velocity more or less goes up by 50%. But the kinetic energy goes up by almost 100%. It basically almost doubles. So just that somewhat, you know, kind of small 50% increase in velocity has a really big effect on the energy. And that's really important because when we think about physics, one of the fundamental laws of physics is conservation of energy. So again, if we think about a baseball coming back and maybe it's about to hit a, a catcher in the face mask, that energy has to go somewhere. That's what conservation energy means. Like energy is not destroyed or created. Once it's on this moving object and it makes contact with the face mask, it has to go somewhere. Three, two, one. What do you think? That was so cool. If maybe the metal of the, of the mask bends, that's great because it takes energy to bend metal. Mm -hmm. So that's a very, very important thing that we think about here in the test lab. And in terms of the test lab, there are a couple things that we measure. We, we, when, you, when you think about an impact coming and hitting that head form in the test lab, you can think about it looking like this, where the horizontal axis is time and the vertical axis is the force, which we denote with G. And so at time equals zero, there's basically no contact with that ball hitting the face mask. But just after time equals zero, you start to get a small increase in that force felt inside of the head. And that force grows up until a maximum, that's the peak G, that's one measure, measurement we, we record, and then it starts to come off as the, as the ball starts to come off the face mask. And so that peak G is really important because you can think like the maximum force is a very important thing. You know, getting hit with a small force is probably better than getting hit with a big force. Then the other thing that's really important that we measure is this blue area under the curve. And what that area under the curve means, and have you had any calculus, have you done integra integrals at all? <laughs> Something to look forward to is, is calculus because that'll tell you how you can calculate the area under this, this squiggly curve. And that's called the severity index, or we abbreviate it as SI. And the severity index, what it means in the real world, is the total energy of that impact. And that's important again because conservation of energy is really important. And, we, and so the goal for any of our face mask designs or helmet designs is really to try to make that severity index as small as possible so that the energy getting to the head is as small as possible. And you can think about things like this. We have two examples where one impact might look like this, where you have a really high peak G. And in some ways you can say that this, this peak G, this peak force, is double the peak force of this impact. But if you ask me what I want to get hit with, I'd rather get hit with this guy because there's relatively less area under the curve than here. This is much, a much bigger impact in terms of how much energy is actually coming into the head.